Are you ready to unlock the best weapons in the game and take your hunting potential to the next level? Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is 4AM and in this weapon series, I've got you covered as I'm going to show you how to unlock top tier endgame Navi weapon blueprints and find the rarest exquisite resources to craft them with the highest stat rules possible to be ready for any encounter in the endgame. Both wildlife hunting and RDA extermination are going to become child's play in Frontiers of Pandora. In today's guide, I'm going to show you how to unlock and craft the legendary Solek Fugitive Longbow. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Alright, so first off, what you want to do is make your way to the Resistance Hideout, a new HQ in the Clouded Forest where you want to talk with Solek. The HQ is basically unlocked shortly after entering the Clouded Forest. This is where you can pick up all the blueprints for top tier bows to craft with amazing stats for hunting wildlife and RDA forces. Alright, so today we're going to craft another legendary bow, an exquisite Solek Fugitive Longbow. Without doubt, one of my hands down favorite weapons because it has amazing damage, high fire rates and works in pretty much any situation. The primary material is any branch of exquisite quality, for which you can hunt for night leaf trees, dusk leaf trees, and dawn sheen trees, which are without doubt the best choice, as these give you the highest values or item rolls on exquisite quality. For the first secondary material, we're gonna need any type of superior bast. You can go with forest seaweed, king lore forest souls delight, shaded water wheat, but clouded lily is without doubt the best because once again, this will have the highest number cap on exquisite harvest. With plus 10% stealth damage, I think this is an amazing one to get your hands on. Well, for the final material, we're going to need any type of fine horn. But of course, we want to make this exquisite as this will maximize the damage output of the bow crafted. So let's begin with the Dawn Sheen tree. This one is most commonly found in the borderlands biome of the Clouded Forest and rare variants can often be found at the top of the Stone Sentinels in the southern part of this region. So for the top of the stone sentinels, you basically want to make your way to the cradling pines or the cut, as this is where you can basically find these big fellas, where we also hunted for some storm gliders in a previous video, but you want to be on the very top of these two fellas. So I think the shoulder peak station or drill outpost alpha are amazing quick travels to use to get there pretty quickly. So remember the maximum values are 56 on an exquisite harvest. The best possible numbers you want to get your hands on for this craft. Anyways, now we're headed towards the peaks, to the twins. And this is where you could also already see a storm glider, which we're going to need for this bow. Anyways, right now, I think the best way to land would be on this one right here to the right. As you can already see plenty of these trees in the distance. Look at that. If we press and hold our Navi powers, you should be able to see them already. And voila, this is already instantly giving us that top tier quality which we would have. You want to gently push towards the left for a pristine harvest. And look at that, we get a 56 item quality. You want to get your hands on like three or four of these bad boys so you can continue crafting more items in the future. Let's quickly do some resting at the camp because man, we always need to force in rain for all these rare harvests. It's nice to have some sun every now and then, don't you guys agree? Anyways, the secondary material for this longbow is the superior bast. So we're going to focus on the clouded lily with that sweet 10% stealth damage. The rarest ones can be found when it's dry, so perfect. So we need the shallow bog biome in the clouded forest. One of my hands out favorites would be the crying giant, as right here we have a shallow bog biome where you can find plenty of these plants. While if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can also find one a little bit more to the southwest. Right here, which is pretty close to our quick travels, the hunter's gathering or the cemetery clan home. So let's check it out. But man, the world of Pandora is so beautiful. Don't you guys agree? Saw so many reviews about this game with people having mixed feelings. I have no clue what they're talking about. It's definitely a much better one compared to all the Far Cry games I've played in the past. Far Cry 3, 4, Primal, etc. There is so much to do with this one. I absolutely love it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think so far. But uh, here we are. So very important, you want to search for the water surfaces for slightly bigger ponds, as there you will have a higher chance 
for these to pop up. Then we're going to use our Navi powers. And look at that. We already see some stuff shining in the distance. That usually indicates that it's a pretty rare quality. Oh, yes. This should be it. Press and hold the power. And there we have it. Maximum quality would be 37. For this harvest, you want to gently push to the back right. And this should give you maximum quality. Oh, we've got some visitors. Well, that was two kills already. Three. I've got another one of Exquisite right here. Sweet. If we quickly have a look at the map, this is where we currently are. And this should give you a max roll clouded lily bust. Exquisite quality 37. Let's go. The final one which we need for this craft would be a horn of fine quality. But of course, like I said before, exquisite quality will give you the highest numbers. So it goes without saying that you want to hunt for a storm glider of exquisite quality to craft the best weapon possible. Again, I already made a full hunting guide for them, which you can find in the top right of the screen if you want to best prepare for these battles. But let me quickly show you a location very close to where we're currently at, the Stone Cloud Valley, where you can find one of these fellas as well. Check out this bell sprig, which is basically on the right side of the steps in the sky to the west of the Crying Giants. So be sure to place your marker right there. This is about two kilometers away from us, but this is where you should also be able to find a storm glider. We're flying right towards it right now, and look at that. It's already hovering over the flying plateau. I think the best way to deal with these fellas is to simply land on the platform, land a couple shots with your heavy bow, very important. Aim for the weak spot, which are basically the lungs in its neck. If it gets very close, just jump off the platform, rinse and repeat until it's gone. All right, so there we go. We have a 48 to 56 Storm Glider on the floor right here. You can definitely get higher numbers if you get a clean kill, which is extremely difficult to do, especially without aim assist. Be sure to share your numbers in the comments down below. Very curious about them. But um, that is basically it. Since we're already here, be sure to pick up the exquisite fruit from these plants. Anyways, let's get back to the camp and craft ourselves this legendary bow. So, my current bow only has 56 damage. Wow, this is gonna be an amazing upgrade. We can go up to 159 with the perfect stat rolls, which we got on both the primary material, the Dawn Sheen branches, as well as the secondary, the Clouded Lily Bast. This gives plus 10 stealth damage, while for the final one, the Storm Glider Horn, it's pretty difficult to get a high roll because the clean kills are next level. Anyways, a total of this gives us a roll of 141, pretty amazing if you ask me. Now we have a 30% increased damage for 20 seconds after breaking line of sight from hostile enemies for 5 seconds. An amazing one, as you always draw your bow out line of sight. 20% damage when your longbow is fully drawn, you want to do this at all times. And also restore 15% of your energy after killing an enemy. Also a 10% bonus to stealth damage. Alright, so there you have it, how to craft the Sotlek Fugitive Longbow. If you find this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button. You have no idea how much one second of your time can help out the channel. Already very much appreciated. And yeah, let us know in the comments down below what your favorite weapon is in the game. I almost exclusively play with heavy bows and long bows, but my guide to craft the Sotlek Survivor Bow can be found in the top right of the screen, by the way. But that is it for today. Guys, a big thanks for watching. Be sure to to subscribe if you want to stay tuned for more avatar right now though it's 4am out i'll check you in the next video or live stream take care peace